You know, I, I always look forward to this 11 o'clock service. I mean, it, it, I don't know why, I think it's part of that, that, that Christmas <coughs> blessing or uh, feelings that you have with this service. And, you know, uh, I was telling Tracy, my wife, earlier today, I just wish it would get here. You know, not, not because I wanted to get over with, but I'm just ready to, to celebrate, to, to sing the carols, to, to, to be here in this space for this very important celebration, the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we prepare to hear our message this evening, I invite you to go to God in prayer with me. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven. Where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. And so we pray that you let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of each heart here be pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. <coughs> Amen. December the 25th, 2021. It was a very significant event that happened last year here and a little bit more, than, a little bit less than an hour ago. And that event was the launch of the James Webb Telescope. I don't know if you're familiar with that happening or not, but it was a way for us to be able to see back millions of, of light years from the past. And the James Webb Telescope was something that was set up so, so that we could see those things. The, the, the near the beginning of the, the, the creation of our universe. But something happened a lot earlier than last year. It was about 1990. December 1990, there was a launch of another telescope by the name of Hubble. It may be a little bit more familiar with that one and, and, and some of the, the trials and tribulations that, uh, the, her, that, that the telescope Hubble had uh, as it was launched up into space. And you may remember that there was a problem with the, the mirror that helped uh, capture the images from, from beyond and they had to go up and fix that. But then once it got a fix, we started to get images back from the, the universe as they pointed the telescope out to get pictures. But something very interesting whenever they did this, that it took about four months for a good image from the Hubble telescope to be received. The image is kind of like this one right here. This is one of the first pictures that the <coughs> Hubble telescope came up. And, and right now, when you look at it, if you can't see it well on the screen, I know it's really, really small, but you see all of these different colors and all of these different lights. And if you look differently, you can see different shapes that are around this, these, these images. But see, when the Hubble telescope took this image, it didn't look like that at all. They, they took the telescope and they, they pointed it out to deep space, which was like this dark area. And without getting all scientific and getting into the, the infrared lights and all of that type of stuff that, that is available here, it was like that they were pointing the, the telescope out into pitch black nothing and trying to get a picture. The four months pass and we get to see this picture. Within, within this frame, there are about 10 to 15,000 galaxies. And within these 10 to 15,000 galaxies, there are billions of stars that, that, that you can see. You can't count them all, of course, because it's so small, but you can see the, the, the picture of this beautiful thing looking back into our history. Now, this picture blows me away, not just because of the beauty, but when we take a look at this picture, in light of scripture, we see that all of this is a part of God's great design for us. 
But when we take a look at this picture, we see that the God who holds the universe in his hands also holds us. Well, the scriptures that I'm talking about are some of the ones that we are very familiar with. The first one, of course, is uh, Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 3. That's where we have the words, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God said, Let there be light. That, that is where God spoke, and, and the light became abundant throughout all of God's creation. But then, in Job chapter 9, which is actually the first book of the Bible that was written, when, when Job is questioning God and questioning all of the things that, that Job is going through, we see that Job gives credit to God for naming the constellations. And if you look into the scriptures, you see he, he names the bear. He names Orion. He, he names these things saying that God created these particular constellations. The psalmist later in Psalm 147, he, he writes that, that God heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. And then he says he counts the stars and calls them all by name. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I hear a passage about God counting the stars and calls them all by name, it gives me comfort and peace knowing that if God is counting all the stars in, in the universe, God also knows who I am. And he knows me, and he knows you by name. And then finally, another passage that I like to look at is Isaiah chapter 26, where it says, look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and his incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. Isn't that a great, even Christmas promise for us? That while God calls us by names, not a single one of us will go missing because God holds us in his hands. In light of this picture, and in light of these scriptures that we just heard, I wanted to revisit the passage from our first lesson this, this evening that Laura read from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and verses 6 through 7. I invite you to follow along with your Bibles or we'll have the words on the screen for you to follow as well. Hear the word of the Lord. <coughs> the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom established and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This passage from Isaiah is both a promise and, and, and a, a provision. It is a promise of a Messiah that was given to the Israelites 700 years before Jesus was born. Now think about that. The picture that I shared with you of the Hubble telescope, it took four months for that picture to, to come into fruition to see all of those galaxies. Kind of seems like a drop in the bucket in the 700 years that uh, the people of Israel had to wait for the Messiah to be born in a little town called Bethlehem. But, but see, here's one thing that we know about the Israelites. That even though they waited, they knew that the light would come. Th throughout the entire story of Scripture, we see a story of waiting. We see a story of Deliverance. Going back to Moses and the Israelites as they were slaves in Egypt, we see over and over God 
providing for them and, and rescuing them from the Egyptians, rescuing them from the enemies that they, they came across as they were moving to the promised land. We, we, we see a more restoring in, in history happening a, a, as God brought Jesus to be born of a virgin on a night like tonight. That is when that light that was promised way back in, in Isaiah chapter 9, that's when that light came to fruition through Jesus Christ. They waited time and time again for, for God to, to, to show up, for, for, for God to do something among the people of Israel, and some people followed the light, and some people didn't follow the light. But there's good news in the midst of all of the story. And the good news is what we celebrate tonight. We celebrate that Christ was born, but Christ was born just more for more than just saving us from our sins. Christ was born so that we can then be a part of the mission that God has set out for us. See, my friends, we are also called to be the light. It reminds me of a couple of different scripture passages that talk about the light. The first one is in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 49. Sometimes Isaiah 49 is called the servant psalm. But it's not really the servant psalm pointing to Jesus. It's pointing to the people of Israel where we hear these words, God saying to them, I will make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. See, God is reminding the Israelites that, that salvation wasn't just for them, but it was for the entire world. And that salvation comes through the light that Christ brings. A light, light that, that is given to the people of God to share with others. Later, as Jesus began his teaching. He shared us another way for us to share our life with others. It is in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, as he's beginning and ramping up his Sermon on the Mount. He says these words, that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. See, Jesus came to, to, to start this, this rescue plan for each and every one of us, but it isn't just a plan for us just to accept, but it's a plan for us to be actively a part of looking at those around us and sharing what God is doing in the midst of our lives so that they can receive that blessing from God and then share that blessing with others. You know, each year as we come together on Christmas Eve, we, we talk about a way that we are able to help the community through our Christmas Eve offering. And we will be taking up an offering, but it won't be the traditional way of passing the plates. So mentioned earlier we have the boxes for you to put your little cards in. We invite you to put your offerings in those boxes around uh, by the entrances. <coughs> we normally give our, communion, our, our Christmas Eve offering to uh, Royce City ISD to help pay off the debts that students occur with, uh, with their uh, lunch bills. And I got an email from the uh, CFO from Royce City ISD this year saying, we have the resources to take care of that this year. That, that if you want to go ahead and do that, you can, but here is another way that you can be a blessing and share the love and light of Jesus Christ with another area within the ISD. Last year, a, a new school was started called the Glenda Ardell uh, Children's, uh, Children's uh, Learning Center. Learning Center, thank you. Patrick, the, children, the Glenda Arnold Learning Center. And it's, it's a school that is designed for pre-K and lower. 
And because it is a brand new school, they do not have an activities fund. Now, the activity fund is something that is fairly important for a school. It allows uh, students to be able to go on, on field trips. It helps pay for school parties. It helps, for help support the staff and the uh, teachers of the school. But because they're new, they haven't had the opportunity to do any in-school fundraising for this particular, particular fund. And I can't imagine uh, sending a whole bunch of preschoolers and low out around the city with uh, sign-ups for uh, popcorn or cookies or something like that. So it's going to be awful hard for them to do the normal fundraising. So Byron said, if, if your church would like to do something this year, would you think about supporting the Glenda Arnold School? And uh, the board said, yeah, let's do that this year. So our Christmas Eve offering, while it may seem trivial to some, it is a way that we are, are doing what we talk about, providing light to a, a broken and hurt world, providing opportunity for students and teachers to, to have an environment where they can learn, where they can celebrate with one another, where they can have something that they may not normally have. See, that is a way that we bring light to the world. I think a great way for us to really see how this light works is like what we do at the end of the service. We light candles, and hopefully you all have received candles as you walked in this evening. The room will be dark, and the only light that we'll have will be the light that we have around with the decorations. But, but as each candle gets lit, you'll start to see more and more light, more and more warmth, more and more uh, this, this shining. And we'll see each other's faces. And we'll see the smiles on our faces because we know that even though we're lighting a candle and we're holding it up in the air, we know that it is a call for us to go out into the world and share God's grace with others. Now I know that sometimes it may take a while for your light to shine. And maybe during this season, you may feel like it's a lot harder for your light to be shining because of things you may be going through or loved ones may be going through. But see, that's the greatness of God's love and grace that God continues, just like the Hubble telescope continues to shine into the darkness to, to take and capture the beauty. The God light that God gives us continues to shine and work in and through us so that our lives become radiant, so our lives become full of who God is and that we can share that love with others. Let us pray. Oh God, you have blessed us with your amazing grace. You have blessed us with the gift of Jesus. And Lord, even though we take this one day to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, help us to remember that that gift is a gift to be shared. That gift is a gift to light up the world around us so that more people may come to that light and experience your love and grace through us. So God, help us to be conduits of, conduits of your love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.